Selfishness is really important if you want to be spiritual. See, the thing is, spirituality is about your uniqueness. Every being in the universe is completely unique. And then there's this other tendency of conformity. Although we are unique, we do need to conform to each other to some degree, and that's normal. That's necessary. It's not something that we need to get rid of, but in between selfishness and uniqueness on the one hand, and conformity and the ability to get along with others on the other hand, there's a little yin-yang kind of dance going on. And when we are trying to get to a spiritual level, so-called spiritual, the yin-yang situation needs to be balanced. See, the thing is, one of the most tempting mistakes in spirituality is seeking the good and seeking to get rid of the bad. Isn't that a crazy thing to say? The thing is, seeking the good and to get rid of the bad is polarity. It is oppositional. And so, think of a triangle. We have the opposites down here, but as we ascend, we get to the pinnacle. And so, most people, when they hear that concept at first, including me, think, well, we do need to get rid of the bad. We do need to head towards the good. We need to be all good. And the thing is, that doesn't work. It just creates opposition. We need to understand that there are different forces, like there's building and there's decay. There's growth and then there's death. There are different forces that are all part of the reality that we have to deal with. So what does this have to do with selfishness? Well, selfishness is one of those things that's pretty much universally taken as a negative. And so what happens is in our quest for goodness, we try to get rid of the negative. If you're spiritual, you're not going to be selfish. But the thing is, actually, if you're really spiritual, you have to be selfish. Because you have to be something first in order to then open up beyond it. So, for example, you have to be a caterpillar first before that you can then create the cocoon turn into liquefied mush within the cocoon and then magically reformulate yourself rebuild yourself as a butterfly and bust out of the cat cocoon and fly away if you try to skip the caterpillar phase, you're never going to make it to the butterfly phase. Caterpillar's not evil and butterfly good. It's part of the uniqueness. So, in your selfishness, you are a certain kind of caterpillar. Okay? You have unique markings and uh, unique leaves that you prefer and whatnot. 
And then you go into your cocoon and you give it all up. And you die to that caterpillar life. Probably not with a lot of intellectual understanding of what comes next. And then you end up as this beautiful butterfly. Or if you're less lucky, maybe a moth. Uh, who knows? But anyway, the thing is, if you're not able to be selfish, you're not going to be able to do the kind of prerequisite things that you need to get done. I like to say, for example, if enlightenment is losing the ego, you got to have an ego to lose, right? If you're so crushed by conformity and trying to not have an ego, that you basically don't have a very differentiated ego, you're not going to be able to get to the stage where you're able to let it go. It's just like somebody who's insecure can't do certain things because their insecurity won't let them, right? Now, it's not really their insecurity doing anything. It's the intensity of their feeling that they're resisting. But I digress. The thing is, we need to differentiate ourselves. We need to come into our uniqueness. We need to not be a part of the mush of consensus reality in order to pierce the veil and go beyond. So a mistake that a lot of spiritual seekers make in disowning their own selfishness is just that. They don't kind of sharpen themselves enough to break through. And so they might have all of the compassion and service to humanity stuff very well established, but they might not have the personal power to really make things happen. And in order to really break through this consensus muggle reality, you need that passion, that power, in order to take it to the next step. So a lot of people who've been seeking their spiritual enlightenment, whatnot, have done it through negation. Like, I won't do this, I won't do that, I won't have sex, I won't party, I won't eat meat, whatever it is. And no judgment against any of those things, and those might be your authentic pathways in the future. But to the degree that you're not finding that uniqueness that is you, you're not going to make it out of the matrix in the same way as somebody who found the uniqueness. I would rather tame that overly selfish client and bring them into a state where they can let go of that selfishness, that would be easier than helping somebody who hasn't really found that differentiated personality and who is in a constant state of surrender and almost defeat in life. And to help them get that power that they have disowned that's a harder task. So consider in what areas that you might be giving up, that you might be allowing yourself to be defeated, maybe because you have 
a, a kind of rule against being selfish. Maybe you think that's not spiritual. In my past, in my 20s, long time ago, I, I went through a phase like that. And the phase was that I thought to be more spiritual, I had to be soft-spoken and gentle and, you know, assume that spiritual outer image. And I noticed that when I would try to do that, people did not react well. Number one, because it was inauthentic. Because I'm a big guy with a big voice. That is my vehicle. That is how I walk into the room. And then if I walk into the room trying to be all gentle and spiritual, people feel like, what's up with this guy? There's something off here. And the reaction isn't great. And I always thought, well, I'm too egotistical, I'm too loud, I'm too opinion, I'm opinionated, and all of these things. And I realized, okay, some of that is true, and I do have work to do on, in those areas, and I do have sharp edges that could be sanded down a little bit, absolutely, and that has been much of my life's work. But you know, on the other hand, I need to embody this vehicle that I'm in. You know, in a future life, I might be a real soft, timid person, <laughs> completely different than now. But this life, I'm a big dude with a big voice. Sorry. <laughs> if it's not for you, turn the page. But it has to be for me because that's what I am. You have to play your instrument. If you're a guitar, don't try to turn it into a trumpet. Because the secret is that's probably more egotistical than anything. Rejecting yourself on a certain level is just as egotistical, if not more, than self-love. Because when you have actual self-love, I find to the degree that you have more self-love, you have more love and compassion for everybody else, for their differences, for their uniqueness. So it's really important to differentiate, to come into what I call your core frequency, and to release the issues getting in the way of that. Thanks so much. If you want more information on my wizardry, go to andysway.com. I would love to talk to you. And andysway at yahoo.com is my email. Thank you so much.